to which microscope do I need? I'm at Powers. This is my laboratory. These are two of my microscopes here, and they're totally different microscopes. One, this is, the basic model of this is $6,000. This is just under $300 new. They are, they're both, they're both good. And the wild thing is, is that today we're gonna learn how to expand the possibilities of this, but also to give this the possibilities of that and to do everything that I'm gonna add onto that over there. So we're gonna be able to give people a way to use microscopes that they can afford in completely new ways. And that's what, you know, regenerative soil microscopy, the Kickstarter is really about, but also the database is opening things up to everyone so that we can explore together, so that we can communicate across a, a wider expanse of the soil science community. Because that's the thing, when I connected the mineral people with the biology people, it began this huge um, fomentation of, of, of discussion and excitement, and it lives on today. I just got a, a message from, uh, from, from someone uh, who is, is a leader in, in, in composting and how the video I did on EM and the dark field this week unlocked something for her. And this is an expert. It's a legitimate expert, like, the, they said that that video finally allowed them to understand EMing the Korean natural farmers. And so that they, they were planning to do something together and they were like, we're trying to understand yeast and everything. And they did. And so this community is, is this community of learning, growing, sharing. And it's like, now let's make it possible for all of us to do that. And so that's what this really is about. This is about opening the doors and so that we all can like go to all these places and talk about what we're seeing. <laughs> Uh, because there's a lot, and there's a lot that we're constantly discovering, constantly connecting and, 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 and figuring out how this applies to our farms, our gardens, our wild soils, um, all of it. Uh, and, and then how that translates directly to plant health and directly to food, uh, nutritional density, and then directly to human health. So we're going to be talking about how all that relates across time, but today we are talking about which microscope do you need? Because this is the most common question I get. They're like, Matt, I have this microscope. Is this microscope right? I want to get a microscope. Which, should I want, which one should I buy? This is the number one question that I get. So let's just go through it. This is the Brightfield Basic. This is a compound microscope. It's a trinocular, which means it has the binocular front and it has that C mount on top. This is a camera in here, and this was just like $75. And there's, you can hook up a Nikon camera to this. The people are doing incredible things. There's actually, it's called a T-mount, and you can get it for almost every single camera. That's an HSLR, HDSLR. Um, I think that's the, the acronym for that. But like the Nikon cameras, there's uh, Canon cameras, there's a, some things for Sony. I have the A6000 Sony, and so it's like, I've been trying to figure it out for that. It's a little bit less mapped out for them. But for the AM scope and the Nikon, everyone's doing it. Ever, it's like all over the internet. So like people are putting awesome cameras on top of these, these microscopes, and they're getting incredible images. And once you get your eyes off of these eyepieces and you're taking a camera here and you're feeding that camera out onto a nice monitor, then you're really in business because you need to be able to visualize things in the way that they will be shared with other people so that it actually captures the thing that you're trying to communicate to them. And so it's another, like, like traditionally people are like on the eyepieces, they're looking on the eyepieces, they have to take breaks every 15 minutes and look away and do all these exercises with their eyes to not to get eye injuries. And, and, and they, if someone wants to see something, they're like, oh, come here, look, at the, look, look here. Do you see the thing in the top right? Like, where in the top right? The thing by the top right. And it's like, you have to like play this game of going back and forth. It eats up so much time. If it's an image, you just point to it. You, 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 don't touch the screen, maybe you don't want oils on it, but you literally touch it, you know what I mean? Like that, they're like, oh, that. You just save like how much time? And in research and communication, um, 
there's patience with all that, right? Like, and we would just run out through a day of like, this, 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 what is this, what is this, huh, huh? That'll wear you out. I mean, like, we, we've all babysat before, um, and, 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 and you get tired when, when, when there's like the endless, like, constant, like, worrying on the first layer of communication and not the fifth and sixth layer of communication that you should be on, where all those other things are kind of taken care of. So streamlining the way we communicate, the way we uh, do things is really powerful. And so I really value the external screen and the best camera that you can get. And on Craigslist, eBay, there are these older, but still nice cameras that are used all over the place that you can get a T-mount and you can put on your C-mount and then you can have unbelievable, unbelievable images from a very reasonable and affordable microscope. This has the BioVid camera on it. It's a 4K camera, it has like all these like, all, like brightness and like I, it automatically changes the brightness um, no matter how low I turn it. So I could turn it like really dark and it'll still adjust for the brightness and it will create the ability for me to do low light pictures that it's not night vision, but it's close. So that's, whoa, right, right? That's another level, another layer. Um, but this goes to a thousand, that goes to a thousand. A thousand X is the limit of resolution in terms of like optical physics. So those OMAX and AM scopes that are like 2,500 resolution. That's not real. That's not real at all. So that's, that, that's zooming in on the thousand X. So just blur upon blur upon blur. Here we go into the blur. Ah. Um, so it's not, I mean, even at a thousand X, it's like the resolution of things has got, it's very, like, it's got, it's got distortions that are, once you get more familiar, are obvious and they're optical distortions. And so we most of the time hang out at 400 X. That's like the most, um, it's like the best of, of all the different areas, you know, the, like the 40 X, the, the 100 X the 400X and then the 1000X, those are the objectives. Um, and 400X is most of where the work is done. I mean, you'll be at 1000X trying to like closely examine the mouth of a nematode and they're like, beep, 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 and you're like, fine, 400X. And then you're recording it and you slow it down and you're like, oh, ha, huh. you're a fungal feeder. Um, and, and, and fungal feeders don't have the telltale circles below the long, um, stylet that, that is, that is like crystalline and sharp. It's a spear, um, but it's those, those balls, those round muscles that are, that, that actually let it to allow it to push through the root, um, that are the telltale sign. And it's quite obvious. Um, once you see it, you know it. So anyway, um, and that's obvious at 400X. So it's like, you don't even need a thousand X for a lot of work. So the whole 2,500 X. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so, so just, you know, keep in mind, you know, keep your thinking caps on. Um, and then that external screen is just so useful. And it's just the ideal for long-term usage. It's, it's comfortable, your eyes are comfortable. If you match the resolution with 4K with a 4K screen, it's unbelievable. And you can zoom, like with, like with this system you can zoom. If you take a snapshot and you're using a computer, this connects to a computer, you can zoom it right then in real time too. And, and you, can, you can really go around things. Some nice gold bars, Matt. I have gold bars. I don't know what gold bars are. <laughs> <laughs> like actual gold bars? I don't. I, I don't have any of those. Um, uh, but 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 
Hopefully it doesn't come to that. Hopefully. <laughs> oh man. All right, back on track. Um, so what if we were gonna adapt either of these into the dark field? So we, I did a video about dark field. Um, I have seeds. I don't have gold. I'm sorry, I don't have like bars of silver and gold. I'm not that advanced, guys. Like I watch those prepper guys with like all that and everything. Um, but but no, I have um, I have seeds. That's what I do. Like I, it's funny. Someone was like, "You don't even say seeds." Like on Facebook, oh Facebook, right? Um, this week, you know, I was like, I was showing my friend yesterday. I have a bag of so just sorghum seeds that like is so big. I think it's like 30, 40 pounds. I grew it all myself. So, oh, gold bars are good advice. Okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> I'll be dropping gold bars of good advice then. Excellent. Seeds are the new gold. And this is, here's a, another piece of, piece of advice. So this is, see that dot in the middle there? That black dot? See how it's like, you see how it's separated? You can see my finger through it. It's it's on top of the lens. It's on top of the plastic, like a like a a dot of paint, or a dot of maybe your niece's or you know um, goth like nail polish, pure black. If you put it on a plastic lens and put it over your condenser, you've done it. Like that's it. Like I I would just put it right there and. And then suddenly we have, we've obliterated the light in the middle and forcing the light to go around it. That's the dark field condenser. And they're like Micro Hunter online on YouTube has a video on how to do this. And he's like, they're cutting the circles and like doing the dot. It's like, that's it? You know, I got this as an oil condenser. Put it down. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, a little bit paranoid about cleanliness and like the lenses on everything. That's the one thing I've learned. People are like, Matt, your pictures are this and that. Only because like, I'll go through 20 different slides and like 20 different cover slips when I want good pictures. And I'm like going through and getting like super clean, spending like minutes cleaning this. I know some people like have videos where they're like, they're, they're soil experts, no doubt. But they're like going like this and then like, and like using the slide. But optically, I know that we're like going down with the microscope through those layers to the slide and you're not on the slide level with the streaks on it, but optically it makes a difference. So I like, I'm like crazy about that to a degree. Um, but the dark field, that's an oil lens. So it's actually a little different than most of the, the dark field lens that we're talking about, but not totally, not, not like it. You can see in the dark field, you will see things in a completely different light. I have a video on it. It's actually a way of seeing color more true to the way they are. And depending on your objective, when you get really close on objects, it'll send this. And again, you'll notice this as an optical distortion over time because you'll see everything has this. There's a point at which when you go in on something, it goes wong, wong, and it creates a sheen around it, like a little rainbow, like a soap scum. And that's just some, 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 um, some objectives are actually that's their quality design is that's what they're supposed to be able to do um, because it helps them examine uh, specifically for like blood and stuff. And so, and so we're actually going to train the machine learning to account for that so that we can differentiate when we're doing the color spectrometry of soil and slides um, later on, because we're going <laughs> to, we just wait when we put this all together, you're going you're gonna to be, Haha, <laughs> you guys are gonna believe this. Okay, so so we've got the dark field. It's easy, it's cheap. DIY, do it with your kids at home. 20 bucks, you can probably, and you can buy like a cheap one like to put over your AM scope. Um, that's non, not an oil-based condenser one that this is um, for super cheap as well. 
than the epifluorescence. Now I've talked about how I've got a, a fix for this. I'm gonna explain what I'm gonna do because we're calibrating the bell curve on the wavelength because it was too wide and flooded out the actual fluorescence with the one I had here. So I, all right, so let me explain how this works first. So a beam of light that is cyan blue and there is no, ah. So most people have a, like black light, purple flashlight and they can see scorpions and some fungi and cat pee and dirty hotels. And you know what I mean? Like, like they, they use those things in forensics and everything. But if you go deeper in, into the frequency, lower in the frequency, you get to cyan blue. And at that frequency, that's the amount of light and it's still visible light to us. We can see it and it's still in the visible range. So it's part of sunlight, but that's this is the one that penetrates actually inches into the soil. So it's the light frequency that they receive and use for navigating. And so when we're looking at, and there's many videos of me doing this, you can see fungi just glowing out, right? Just, and that's the way everyone in that context, microbes and, and other fungi, see things. So the, the worms, the echotraid worms, pinworms, you know, um, they autofluoresce with their hairs in a very distinct pattern. And I don't know if that's like signaling to others or if it's representative of diet, but, but there's so much going on here that you just suddenly see. And plants look like glass. Like, and that's what opened up my thinking and inspiration into creating light field technique, which we can work on this too. I've already tested it out. But epifluorescence is how the way it works is you send down that cyan blue light and it's exciting things at 48, uh, 485 nanometer wavelength, cyan blue. And then you need to focus that light so that it doesn't go outside of a certain tolerance of bandwidth. And I would say like within 10, and that's what we're, we're figuring out right now. Um, so that we can have uh, a light source that's affordable, that uses a single LED that has a focusing, and we're, we're working on the focusing lens right now and then we can shine it on our sample. And then this has a built-in one that goes in and out every time I do the peg on the other side, in and out. And when I open it and have the, the filter lens go into place, the light comes on. So it's never on without a filter in place. And the filter light, the filter light restricts the the frequency that comes up so it has a 510 barrier on it and so what comes up is that green image and that super greenish yellow evidence of fungal activity so it's very useful it's a non-destructive way of evaluating fungi and mycorrhizal activity and roots fungi in the soil fungi in the compost um, and inside plants, on plant surfaces, in the leaves, in the trichomes, the actual hairs that are on leaves of all plants, you can do this instantly. You just put it directly underneath. There's no cover slide that you would use with it because the light comes from above, like a stereoscope. So um, stereoscopes though are lower resolution. Uh, they're used for like looking at like circuit boards and stuff like that. Um, and they're like the kind of microscopes that you're like, that's just like looking close at something. How is that a microscope image, dude? Like, it's like, <laughs> they're non-dramatic, <laughs> but they help people like with like working on circuit boards, do really tiny surface mount um, circuitry work. Um, I don't do that soldering. I do the big old fat old school soldering. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like children's toys in comparison, like blocks in comparison to the surface mount stuff that, that now is more and more automated by machines. But, um, but 
this is what I'm working on. I've got the right filter from uh, an awesome company that I'm working with here, and I'm narrowing down um, the light, the focus uh, lens. So the lights in the bandwidth, um, it, it covered the bandwidth within the bell curve clearly, but it, the bell curve was giant. So, so that's why it was a turquoise color and not cyan blue. Um, and so that was, that, that he is back with the, the manufacturer and we're in discussion. Um, the plan is for me to buy these things in bulk. Um, and so that one of the stretch goals would be that I'd be able to get these things in bulk and create kits and then teach people, uh, I mean, it's easy, to install and use um, the light and the filter in this, because the filter is right here on the C-mount. I just put it right on top. And this has the um, this has a focus on it, it has a condenser ring on it, which is really critical so that you match the camera focus to what's going on. Because you're like, oh, I'm focusing down here, but it may look fine in your eyepiece if you use those. But then the camera and the... So, so, so you might need a, a, a... I did for this one. It didn't come with it, and I got a condenser ring. I also got this for this one. Um, so I expanded, for, so this has two methods that come standard with it, right? Epifluorescence and bright field. This tint standard comes uh, bright field with one of these or your DIY, you can take it to dark field. And then my friend, the geologist, Diamond, was telling me I need to get a polarizer. Is it gonna look shine through? I don't know if it's gonna sh shine through because it's the light coming towards us. <laughs> but anyway, if it was shining towards you, you would see that a light came past through this and light can't at certain angles because it's a polarized lens set. And so this polarized lens set is going, I mean, it makes you think of Vsauce, right, Dan? And so um, that is a new acquisition and there's no degrees on it. And so the you geologists out there or experience are gonna go, oh, well, why are you planning on using that? Well, what we need to do is leverage that RCL database. So I'm gonna buy, and they're expensive, man, but I'm gonna use this, this Kickstarter funds to buy a geology, a geologist's reference sample, prepared sample kit. So I will have minerals of all different types that I will use as references with the polarizer and their color and their placement tell me who they are. And there's a chart that's free online. Everyone can get it and I'll share the, the link and everything. Uh, everyone wants this to be standardized, which is incredibly important for it to be standardized because there's an actual, <laughs> there's an actual way of doing this and it's, it's already proven. So it's best that we all, because, okay, there's been like 20 different forms of these charts, right, over the years and they've gotten better and better and better as color has gotten more and more refined um, over time. And computer reading has become more, more and more fine. And so I've got the latest chart. Um, it's, it's a French name. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce it right now. Um, but the point is, is that with a polarizer, you can figure out which minerals are in your compost. So you can have, using a polarizer, you can do the degree using your, your sample and you set the degree and then you can, you can start uh, creating references off of that. And then you go to your other, your, your compost sample after you get that, get that first reference and you're, you're in that range then you're like, I'm in sodium's range, and then you're putting it in, or I'm in um, quartz, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is all quartz, or all feldspar, or they all have a different wavelength, and it, like every single degree reveals a different wavelength and reveals a different mineral, and it's all charted out. I mean, it, it, so, so this is why, <laughs> You know, it was funny. It's a mad scientist geologist who told me about this. 
Uh, and I, I've been, been going through it and verifying it and it's so cool because we're going to be able to look at the minerals and figure out the minerals. And then because we have a reference to go off of, we're going to be able to, the database, start sharing this and allowing other people to develop, even without buying a kit, having a reference that they can refer to and eyeball and get right. And then it's going to go even further and we're going to have uh, spectrometry readings of those automated. And so it's going to be like, and then we're going to have the amount of, uh, of, uh, of area calculated as well. And so you'll have, we'll actually be able to tell you the amount of percentage of sodium or, or whatever from a microscope. So it's another way of soil testing minerals from a microscope. And everyone's not even thinking about this, uh, that I've ever met who's doing microscopy for soil and compost and bio, you know what I mean? It's all biology. There's no minerals, right? Ha! <laughs> And so my whole idea of like looking at the organic matter for color uh, suddenly gets legs. Uh, I mean, I was talking about how it's like in the dark field, we can see the different colors really clearly. Well, with the polarizer, we can literally read the actual minerals that are in there. But we need to have those references. Those references need to be shared. We, and, and, and once we start building this out and connecting those two things, those two, the references to the examples and the examples being labeled, then we've got working models of these minerals in situ and what it looks like. And it's gonna also help our eyes, flu like fluency of our eyes. Like you're gonna be able to see, you're gonna be like, oh wow, this is all iron. Dude, look at this. Like, like you're gonna be able to like just see from the colors as we've labeled things over time and then, but then we're also gonna be able to have this automated system and it's not technically like AI, it's not like learning. Like, like once we have those things mapped out, it just does it. It's like, it's automated. And that's what my, my team was explaining to me. One of my stretch goals for this, which is like I, I already kind of achieved, like, I is that we were going, we we're going to create automation so that the database actually has tools for every single soil consultant, uh, soil laboratory and biologist and researcher out there so that like it calculates the bio, the bacteria on their slide, like calculates the biomass, does the ratios, does your mycorrhizal inoculant uh, ratios and percentage for you. Like, 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 like all the math and the counting and the tedious parts, that we're going to be taken care of. Like, that's the crazy thing about this. So we are creating the, 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 the information that the automations are going to A, learn off of and, and also use. And then they're gonna be community, community rated for quality and for interpretation. So, so as we do like the, the training for, and the parameters for measuring those things, we're only going to look at the four and five star entries, right? And, and, and it's a place to learn. I don't want to like, you know, like take anyone out or like, like, you know, leave it all in. Let those people see that, like, you've got great pictures, but, but you know, your interpretation on this and you're going to have people able to reinterpret your work as well. But ah, I'm on a tangent because I'm so excited about this. <laughs> And, and so, so polarized lenses are this new thing. And so this is like already like, we're talking about four different ways to transform a regular compound bright field microscope that you could pay $200. For. I know people are getting these for 150 used on, on Craigslist where they're at. So for like 150 and then buying some add-ons, suddenly you've got four microscopes in one. Well, we're gonna go further, okay? So the light field technique is something that anyone with this can do. When I reveal it, everyone will do it. Like that's the thing is I realized, or, so my roommate in college had one of those accordion cameras. And so these old fashioned, they're boxes and they like open up 
and they've got a little like 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 hinge on them <laughs> and then the accordion out and they've got a block in back that you a square block that you take out and do one photo and flip it and then do another and then you're done that was my roommate and his understanding of light and shadow and he was always in dark rooms and everything I do things with a microscope. Part of the reason why my pictures are the way they are is because I think like, like, like Simon would. And so I started doing things. I started doing, it's, the light field technique will be in the book. It will be in the introductory course. Uh, I'm, I'm going to showcase all the things that we're doing in the, in the, in the full course. Um, but I'm, uh, let me explain the introductory course. So the introductory course, like I've got all these Elaine Ingham students that have showcased what, uh, what they taught her in regenerative soil. So Catherine Hinson is showcasing her, she's a certified soil laboratory expert. And so she's showcasing everything that Elaine taught her years ago when she was starting out and then that she's refined and expanded on her own as a professional consultant I think she's on like eight years, nine years now as a soil consultant. So Catherine Hinson has an incredible amount, incredible scope of experience. And so she is like the main teacher in regenerative soil. And so I'm gonna formalize that and expand upon on that. And so if you've been in regenerative soil, you're familiar with that. And we're gonna make sure people are feel really comfortable with bright field and how to operate a microscope in general. So it's gonna introduce people to a microscope, how a microscope works, walk them through all of that. So when, when Catherine comes uh, on and, and I have those, those videos with Catherine, it will all be a lot easier because I know that for some people they're like, okay, I understand what she's saying, but I need to learn to use the microscope now. <laughs> so I'm gonna put those things together and then I'm gonna do a thorough overview in the directory course of all the things that I'm going to cover in the full course. But the full course, we're gonna go through everything. We're gonna do demos. We're gonna go through the techniques for evaluating the results so that it's not just the ability to do something, it's to be able to do something about it. <laughs> and to, to also refine our skills and, and to be the, the, the leaders in the RSOIL database context, you know, badges when you're, you'll be a member that's certified and so you'll have a badge so people can go to your, you, they can find you easier and they can also trust what you're saying and, and they can, you can help a lot of people. And so the course and, and the book really are the way that people are gonna have the tools, the know-how and the understanding and the interpretive skills to navigate, to discuss and document. The, the microscopic world through all these different lenses. And there's never been any course offered that does dark field, bright field, epifluorescence, not even to mention the polarized, because that's like completely new out of the bag. I've never heard anyone mention it anywhere. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah, yeah. And then the light field, I mean, the, the light field allows us to see things in the way that they actually look like in natural lighting. Epifluorescence is that, that, that blue, cyan blue light and it comes back all green and we see the fungi so clear. We see all the photosynthesizing chlorophyll is red and the algae is red and it's dramatic and cool. Very, it's, and then we do live de dead t uh, stains with it and viability test stains with the, with the epifluorescence and they just show up like so easy. It's so easy to read. That's what they feed to flow cytometers. And that's what the machines automatically read now in almost every single laboratory. So it's so pro, it makes it so easy. But the state in which we perceive things, that natural light is, there's something there. I mean, when the soil looks like the soil, in dark field, it looks like space, but imagine if dark field was like bright field without that like um, silhouette effect. 
So that's what we fix. We get rid of the silhouette effect. And we create the ability to see things as they are. And it, it, it takes some, it takes, it's a technique. Um, everyone can do it. It takes some practice to do, but I think within half an hour, an hour of practice, everyone's going to be able to do this and everyone's going to be doing this. So light field, if you haven't seen those pictures, um, plants are actually like glass. They're crystalline, they're see-through. And that actually kind of makes so much sense, doesn't it? Because it's like, oh, this is how the light goes in, right? It's how they photosynthesize. The light has to go in, so they have to be translucent on some level. And they literally are. And we couldn't see it because of the way the bright field was working. And I saw it with the epifluorescence. And so it just put me on this mission. And I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't intending to, I was actually trying to prove myself um, whether I was right or wrong about uh, something else I was working on. <laughs> and so I was, um, it was actually something to do with the wavelengths. I was, I was moving lenses around and trying different things and doubling lenses up being a mad scientist and I realized we were doing things upside down. Um, almost quite literally. Might have given it away, but it doesn't matter. I, this is gonna help everyone. And, I, and I, I know that like, you know, everyone wants to know now, but it'll be in the book in the second people start doing it in my course, it's gonna go viral. They're all, um, you know, so many of my students are Elaine Ingham students as well. And they all talk, we all talk, we all talk. <laughs> We're all friends behind the scenes. And so this is gonna go like, like a cat out of a bag that will never go back in the bag. Um, or like, so, so once I do reveal that, that's going to just be, yeah, what everyone does. Uh, especially when you're examining roots it's going to be best practice because um, everything else we do is damp, so damaging. It's so ridiculous. We destroy the actual state in which things are. And then we make conclusions based upon this destructive atmosphere and, and it creates conclusions that are messed up. So we have to start doing things uh, in a completely different way. And that's why my images are so different. Folks are like, how are you getting these images? Oh my gosh. Like James White, like three months into this was like, Matt, like give you another three months. Well, that was like six months ago. He was like, you're going to be a master at this. He's like, you've already like, I don't understand what you're, how you're doing this. And I'm like, I mean, at the beginning, I was like thinking that it was the microscope. But, but now it's, I think it's because the light and shadow thing, like the artistry thing, like I'm just a creative artist type and I'm not like the more, and I got the engineer stuff a little bit, but that's why I work with so many different people because they, they, they fill in those gaps for me. Um, that's, that's the truth. I work with as many people as possible because that's the only way that we actually extend past our boundaries of our understanding, expectation, and assumptions. Because we all have them. So, and that's why I have to do a crowd feedback loop to actually design the database to, uh, in, in, in a refined way. Like, I'm going to do everything. I'm going to where we've already, we've already got all these amazing ideas. Uh, and I've got working examples of a bunch of these things. Uh, we've got, we've got the math, we've got it all ready, but the user experience, that feedback loop, I, as a teacher, um, I need that because that's how I get to the next layer. And then you guys are like, oh, this is so great because of this. And I'm like, because of that, oh, what if I do this then? And then it takes off. That's, that's the, always the way it works. Um, in music, it was like when you work with that really good producer, like, here's my best song. And he's like thought about doing this and you're like 
and it changes everything. Like that's how it is to work um, in, in, in collaborative groups when the design is right. Oh, EM, we're gonna drink EM now. How about some blue methylene? Um, you can stain your roots with blue methylene too and I'll teach you stains and stuff too. This is a, a pharmaceutical grade. that go in there. So this is what we stain our roots with. But it's also a metabolic medicine. Cheers. But wait. Let's do it. Get those microbes in. Salute. All right, <sighs> so we can easily, <laughs> come that green at first, bud. Um, so, so, and then you go further, you have more and then it turns blue. Um, and it's a metabolic medicine that targets sick cells first, targets cancer and viruses, um, heals the sickest cells first. It's bizarre. I'm reading a book on it right now. Um, and my, um, my biohacking friends are all, all about it. Um, so, so yeah, yeah, I'm playing with it right now too. Um, can't help it, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Dave Asprey, um, Dave and I write each other because he's a permaculture guy secretly. Uh, he doesn't like talk about it to everybody. He's living on a permaculture farm. So we're all, we're all in it together. <sighs> and I was writing him this morning. So, um, so I, I love, I'm so excited. The enthusiasm behind this Kickstarter is greater than anything I've ever done. We're on track to double the amount of participation and, and funding um, on this Kickstarter as the Regenerative Soil Kickstarter. So this is the second book in that trilogy, and yes, it's for a book and a course and a database, so it's more than anything I've ever done. But people really see the power in holistically taking all the soil tests together and matching the plant health with the soil health for the first time. And instead of me getting a soil test from the local extension center, and then looking at it and then never comparing it to anyone else. Imagine like what that does. It's like, that's how you get false positives when it's a black box scenario and no one checks anything, right? So this is gonna flip everything on its lid. And not only that, the, the highest organic matter uh, levels are going to be ranked. The highest fungal dominance and compost uh, samples are gonna be ranked. The, the most nutritionally dense plants are going to be ranked. And so people are going to click on those most nutritionally dense plants and then they're going to see the soil. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, look at the minerals there in coherence. Oh, look at the high organic matter and look at the beautiful biology. And maybe they send me the same sample and I do the DNA testing for them and they've got the DNA there. And so we know all the way through for the first time ever what the hallmarks are of the healthiest plants. And this is the only way that we go good, better to best. Cause people right now they're like, and then after the hot compost, I'm gonna put EM on, or should I put Bokashi? And it's like that kind of sophistication, we haven't mapped out. And the only way we map it out is by actually doing it, testing and comparing those tests over time against each other and against our, our bioregion against it all over the world and ourselves over time in an open public database. That's what the R Soil database is all about. The Kickstarter for it is right now. We, all my students, if you're interested in a microscope, get 40% off LW, LW Scientific microscopes. So if you're in any of my courses, you absolutely, you absolutely can, um, can get a 40% discount. And there's cheaper microscopes, there's used microscopes, they will work. This is just the simple, you know, $275 Amazon uh, compound microscope from like six years ago, five years ago, 
somewhere in that range. I think it was five and a half years ago. And this, we're gonna trick out and we're gonna do side-by-side -side images. You'll see the difference. This is brighter, cleaner, but you can see the same exact things. Um, th th this thing's like National Geographic images. It's like, I feel like um, it's a Hubble telescope crossed with a, a Porsche and I get to like ride it into the microscopic like, like world. It's unbelievable. It's so well designed and it's so nice. Um, I've never driven a Porsche, so I don't know about that. <laughs> But I've seen the Hubble images and it works like a well-designed machine that's like a, like, I don't know. But, but, but you get what I'm saying, I think. So, so we're going to open the doors for everyone to participate. Everyone to take their one microscope, turn it to five microscopes. I want everyone to be involved. The database is literally, membership is going to be annual $45. Or, I mean, if we get enough people in there, I can knock it off and make it even less. Um, but, but, but I want us to actually fund the actual change, the actual automations. So the, the, all those things happen, we get all the buy-in, we get the working examples. It's a really incredible system. It has tools that are must-haves for every laboratory, every soil consultant. That's what I want to accomplish. And, 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 and it also is free for everyone to participate, to upload, to look up anything. So it's in the open source code. So it will be 100% free to use and as a resource for research and to participate in, and you can be anonymous. So the $45 membership, there is the, 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 the database is not built yet. No, um, the Kickstarter is happening right now for it. So I've got a team though that um, I'm working on all of the different ideas and 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 I'm, I've got uh, example pages um, of what things will be like. Though I have an incredible logo creating son. I, I I never okay. So he just like took off in the past three weeks and has been watching color psychology, logo and branding psychology. He's turning twelve. And he's unschooled, so it's like he's totally created the most incredible logo um, that I need to show you guys. It's it's unbelievable. He's eleven, and the logo is genius. So I'm gonna change the website examples uh, design wise and let him take over to the design because he is un his eye is incredible. He's an artist like like on another level. So. I'm gonna, uh, and, and, and so we're gonna design really, really nice, better than I've designed looking site. They're just, those are the working models for right now and shows you the functionality of the way things will be. So the database is not built yet. We're designing it and we're designing all the automations and the way that things will flow, the way that memberships will work um, and the way that we're gonna be able to compare anything to anything. So you could be like, how does pH change across bioregions in relationship to nematodes? And, you know, I mean, my book years ago, you did, I, I have a chart of how pH relates to, to nitrogen. Well, this will, will show that. So people who are curious will be able to go to this database and look those kinds of things up and verify them for themselves rather than taking a paper online or just from all the samples they have from their local bioregions or their students like I've had, if we do it all together, that's going to create a very self-evident, a very powerful picture. And when we see that healthy soils, living soils, high organic matter soils are what create the best plants and using the bionutrient meter, have one here, using the BRICS meters, I've got two, um, I've got a new one that has the uh, uh, temperature correction on it. Um, and so we're going to be able to map and then we'll have a place for plant sap analysis as well. That's going to map the health of the plant in a way that's never been done. So the, comp the best composts, but also the best food at the farmer's market and the best soils are all going to be brought into one place and shown and highlighted and honored. 
and the cream will rise to the top and the people doing the right things will be seen and recognized for their work. And I, I, I th 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 this is the solution to the problems that we have with soil, the deficiencies that we have in our food, and the, 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 the lack, I mean, the, the inconsistency with our supply chain, the, the food shortage, shortage fears, we're going to know good, better, best. We're going to know, you know, slow, fast, fastest, right, right? We're going to know all the levers and the fastest ways to do things, the best ways to do things, because the best practices will rise to the top. So that's what this is about. This is, the, the, and, and, and if this resonates with you, please share this with your friends, with your community, with, the, with, with, with everyone you can, because the reality is this is something that is so important, it's gonna affect so many people that even just whatever amount you can donate will help. Anyone that you reach that joins us will help because every single enthusiastic person who's participating in the documentation and is, is doing high quality images and, and documenting, you know, the time of day, the day, uh, the, the, the feedstocks that go into the compost. Imagine if we had a database mapping that out. And then the biology at the end of the process, the length of time, the location, and again, anonymous, I want to make sure that anonymity is respected. So you could drop a pin within five miles of where you are and you could be anonymous. But I know that the, the local farmers and the compost companies will not want to be anonymous. They want to be very public because they want to be on top of that chart and for people to recognize that their food is the food to buy, that it is the best for their family, the best for their kids. And, and this is how we start transforming the whole food system. And we start transforming our food from just sustenance into medicine. <sighs> it's, I mean, this is the most exciting thing. So feel free to ask me your questions. If you've got questions, I can see them in the chat. Um, Specific EM brews for specific plants. Yeah, and specific ratios of decompositional members come from different feedstocks. And those different feedstocks will have different ratios and those different ratios have different biostimulants at different rates. And so you're like, hmm, this one's more vegetative. Hmm, this one's more for perennial reproductive. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be able to map to the, and, and not only that, my students are like, oh Matt, you're improvising and doing this and that, and you're grabbing this and, and now they're starting to do it. And, and as we map out the improvisational, we begin to see new keys and new relationships, but only when we align it and we see across bioregions, organic matter, across all hot compost, across all compost types, across, this is the thing, we've never had the opportunity to do this. This will change all of soil science. It will force the, the, the universities to reconsider all their assumptions. <laughs> It'll make us, a lot of us go through our assumptions and gut check. And that's good. That means we're all learning. That means that we are verifying what we know. And we're making the ground we're all standing on a little bit more stable. And that's what it's about. <sighs> and it's only through these community source solutions that we arrive there. You can't, it can't be this pyramidic structure with the, the expert on top doling out little bits of information and being like, no, I have it all up here. <laughs> It's not the 80s any longer. We have entered and we know what the power of real communication and design and community is. And, and so um, what will, great question, what, I'll repeat it. What will prevent misinformation, miscalculation, all of that? Identification of things is part of your interpretation and then there's quality of the image 
separate community ratings and everyone rates each other. So we have five, one out of five star ratings on things. And so the community, um, and, th and this, is, this is really the way to do it, is ha train people, have high quality inputs, set the tone. That's why we're gonna have a beta testing time period. And then we're gonna have all the students from my courses participating in this. And we're gonna set the tone. And then we're gonna have this environment of learning and growth and kindness. Um, and and it, will, it will actually allow us to self-regulate, just like in nature. And by separating quality of image from interpretation, we actually allow for people to be honored for the work they're doing and recognized for what they're good at, but also keep those things separate. And then as well, you can take any image as a member and reinterpret it, any video and reinterpret it. So you could be like, okay, well, here, I'm gonna take your image and I'm gonna reinterpret it. And so there'll be like a double entry or uh, 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 it'll be like, um, um, yeah, it'll be like a double entry uh, interpretations and the multiple interpretations will be rated individually. And so then that second interpretation will, it's by an expert and they've got five stars that will go on top. And then that will be the interpretation that's linked to that image in the search engine. And the other interpretation will be down with the two stars or the one stars that no one ever really goes to. And so it's educational for those people uh, participating instead of censoring them and being like, you're wrong. <clears throat> it's like, that's not the right message. I believe the right message is going to be self-regulating and making sure that we're doing it with kindness and love. And then we've got these automated counters um, and, and we've got these systems that are gonna help everyone make a lot of those, um, those possible misinterpretations. We're gonna avoid a lot of that. Um, and obviously as that over time, we're gonna make that all a lot more sophisticated. Uh, we're gonna add spectrometry onto those automations. We're gonna add, right? <clears throat> so, so I'm really excited about what comes next. Um, and it was so amazing yesterday, I was talking to the leader in our team uh, for, for the database. I've got a team that's gonna do the database uh, with me. And they were like, Matt, this is gonna be easy. So <laughs> I'm so excited about this. I'm so excited about this. All the things I want to do are going to be the automations, the, 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 the tools that will make it so that being a soil consultant is not tedious at all. It's fast, it's easy, let's go, let's go. Let's focus on action, you know what I mean? And uh, it'll make uh, people, it'll make it so that people can get through like those stacks of samples that they've got to get through to people fast and it will actually encourage them to do more samples so that they have a more accurate representation of that because it's time everything's time and if we if we take away the tedium and we amp up the satisfaction and we amp up the accuracy by doing that at the same time we open the door for them doing more tests and because these tests are pinpricks pin, diluted pinpricks in the actual soil environment, the more that you do, the more accurate you get. And the, and the only way that we encourage people to do more work is by making it more, making it easier with automations. And yes, you will be able to, you will be able to download the raw data um, as a member, because I want people to be able to download the raw sequencing files for the DNA and then run them throughout the databases because the different databases get different results. And um, if they're willing to do the database, cross database work, and then find the differences between them and expand that, that knowledge set that we have, please do. Um, it's not hard, it's just time consuming. So again, it's, 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 it's empowering people to do and, and making it easier to do that, that work that will change our understanding of everything.
Great questions, you guys. Keep them coming. <laughs> because the, the reality is, the entry point to this is, is never been this low. Like we can get involved at the highest level in microscopy today with this program, and there's no other program like this, unfortunately. Um, I'm, I'm proud to say it's the first, but, but at the same time, like, you know, the, the, this is the first time, right? And so it, it's never been this affordable. The, 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 even the closest programs are five times the, 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 the costs. And they don't teach epifluorescence, dark field, light field, polarization, all of these things. So this is a, this is a, a, a huge opportunity. And also it's already funded. You guys know that, right? Like we already smashed through the, the initial goal. I was really worried. I, and, and that's why I haven't announced any stretch goals because I was also worried because I had to go through all the research of like the database for the ideas that I really wanted to do. And so I've been spending weeks in this feedback loop with all these different designers on, on, on what we, what's, what's possible. And, and the funny thing is what isn't possible, what I haven't figured out. That's the crazy thing about this. Everything I bring up, I'm like, and we could do it like that, right? And they're like, if we did it like that, we could do it very easily. That's not even machine learning. That's just an automated thing. And I'm like, okay, so we could do it? They're like, yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So I can't, <laughs> I haven't hit a wall yet with every new idea that I have, like transforming this to epifluorescence, the guy's like, oh yeah, it's easy. I just gotta make sure that we like map it to the right thing and then I'll sell you them in bulk. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. And, and so th this, this opens up a huge door that, that changes everything for everyone. Uh, regardless of whether you're trained by Elaine and you just wanna participate in the, in the database, um, or, or, or you want to hop in my courses and learn all the other ways of doing things, or you're a nurse and, um, or you're, you're a university trained uh, student and you, you, you're going with the microscope and you, you just want to want to learn what's going on here, you know, and, and add this new skill set to your, to your modalities. I tell you what, it's pretty amazing talking to some of these nurses. They've got their home microscopes and they're like, uh, they're connecting the soil and the plants health to their human health already and all under like under the radar and I'm like oh my word like theories that we have over here because we're not doctors we can't say anything you know they're already doing so uh, it's it's unbelievable I feel so honored and excited to be part of this right now I'm a facilitator. I'm a catalyst. That's like what I do. I love learning and like curiosity sparks things. And I've been catapulted through the Kickstarter programs and through your encouragement and support as a community to this level of a citizen scientist that I never thought I could be at. Um, and, and it's just, it's, it's the most incredible thing. The transformation that of who I've become. I used to be a bass player. I played four strings at a limited vocabulary. Um, and to be here now, it's just, it's just absolutely an honor. Absolutely incredible honor. Um, yeah, Jeff Lowenfels endorsed it. Uh, James White, I was talking about, he's excited about, it. he was like, Matt, you need to make sure there's a place for published papers to be included as references like mine. <laughs> so we're going to be doing that. Um, we're going to have a library in other words, as part of this database but it will be a living library. Um, and I've got, I'm gonna do a full presentation. I know that we're live and I can't like show you slides and stuff, but I've been building all this stuff for the design team and, and then having my 11 year old son go, dad, you need to do a logo that allows you to iterate across logos over time and people to recognize that it's still the same logo and have it be zoomed really small and zoomed really big and still be recognizable or cut in half and still be recognizable. I'm like, son? Like my, my, my 11 year old right now is taking off like rockets. I couldn't even believe it. He was educating me. So, so I've got some incredible things to show you guys. Please um, let me know what you think uh, about the new logos. I'm gonna be sharing them in the, in, the, in the community section here on YouTube soon. 
And if you have any other questions, I'm here to answer them. We've been here together over an hour. I appreciate you all so much. The, the YouTube community is the closest to my course communities. My course communities are absolutely incredible. Uh, they're vibrant. We've actually got our own social networks that are off. They're like off grid. They're like separate from all the other social um, communities. Like they're, it's like, like a Facebook without Facebook. So um, this is increasingly what's happening. People are setting up islands. So, so yeah, and it's absolutely incredible, but you all are absolutely amazing. So thank you. All right, no more questions. The Kickstarter is ending in about a week and it's ending like at a really awkward time at 8 a.m. on the Sunday morning. So <laughs> it's gonna catch people way off guard. So join us now, hop in. Uh, and, and because this is a Kickstarter like no other, it needs support, it needs the word spread. We need buy-in from everyone. Whether they're hopping into the database as a free member or a full member, whether they're from the Soil Food Web School of Thought, whether they're never used a microscope, we're gonna help everyone at all levels take it to another level and be able to work together. And um, eyewitness, can you repeat the question? I'll, I'll hit it. Um, it might have slipped by while I was talking about another, another question. Hit me with it. Do we have a Discord? Um, I was gonna do Zoom and then like have people like come on. Discord, you can't see people's facial expressions and then that's like 80% of our communication. So I've never done Discord. Um, I'm willing to check it out. If you guys really feel like that's like the way to go, we'll talk about it as a community. Um, but like, we'll, I was gonna do community Zooms and then we were all going to like discuss things and bring up um, things uh, that we want to add to the database or change about the database. Um, how would an entry level person benefit and grow from this without being overwhelmed or confused? Well, the way I teach, I teach micro to macro. I teach how things relate to the actual, how things relate to actual actions. And otherwise it's not relevant. Um, so this is gonna teach people, you know, how to evaluate so quickly. I'm, I'm gonna do a video on three samples later this week. So I'm gonna go to like sample the dead soil, sample the compost and sample an area of native soil that's doing okay in this crazy drought. And then we're gonna look at them in succession and we're gonna do go through the thing. Like, is this alive or dead? It, are the nutrients actually cycling? Because you can actually see that very quickly. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's like one nematode per drop of soil solution. It's like, you can do this. I can do this. We all can do this. Everyone, everyone can get involved. The, the actual soil microscopy part and the, the, the diagnosing your compost and soil is, is quite, quite easy. It's, it's the, the, all the stuff I've been talking about that we're gonna map out that we've never seen before. That stuff's never been done before. And that's what the, the, the database is gonna get, give us. The ability to evaluate our soil roots for, for health, for inoculation rates. So we know whether we need to re-inoculate that field um, and do a second pass with compost tea or a second pass with an inoculant slurry. Um, you would be able to know that about your garden or, or your field. Um, the ability to, to look at a leaf surface and, and to see if there's pathogens early on. The ability to, um, just in general, you're gonna, all the things that I'm teaching are gonna teach you how to evaluate for health how to evaluate for, for not just health, like whether we're on the good or bad, but vigor. So we'll be able to see like how it is relatively, and in general, because we're taking, you have to keep your you know, thinking cap on, right? We're taking snapshots of, of a whole. And so it's seeing how things are cycling, how fast they're cycling relative. And that's why creating actual um, references is so critical. Um, at first to develop our lie between alive and dead, 
but also between more vigorous and less vigorous. Um, so, so, and, and that, that is a little bit to do with the biomass fungal to bacterial ratios, but there's also movement. There's also uh, migration across. Um, so there's like in situ moving and then there's like movement across and like um, there's both of those things happening. So, so mapping all that out and correlating it, um, there's new, there's always going to be new layers. Um, we've only identified 0.01 of the nematodes definitively. So we've categorized them by mouth parts. So we know who's who. So we're like, this guy's a good guy, this guy's bad. Like we know that and it's like instantaneously like recognizable if they've slowed down enough for you. Um, and there's techniques to slow them down or you can, you can just wait actually. Um, uh, you leave the slide on there under the light and they eventually um, just slow down. But as a beginner, you can learn all of those things that I listed and you can get the health like uh, assessment of your soil, your leaves, your, your plant sap, your, uh, your compost. So it's an incredibly powerful modality and it's so, it's so powerful that, that when I figured out this way of doing it within six months, I was doing things that I was taking it to all the other people who are my mentors and they're like, how are you doing this? Yes, that's what that is, but that's incredible. And so, but at the same time, I was like, well, it's not hard. <laughs> so these are things that I, I, I can absolutely teach you. These are things that you can absolutely learn and they absolutely translate into direct actions and they allow you to evaluate what you're doing. This is the thing is we've been flying blind in a lot of ways and doing faith-based gardening and not verifying what we're doing in a scientific robust way. And even with a lot of the fungal to bacteria ratio calculations, I think that there's probably a 30% to maybe even 60% error rate with um, people doing it by hand. And so, so that's another thing that I really want to map out. And I've, so the thing is, the way a lot of them have been taught is to randomly go around and pick five random um, fields of view. But the logical count method is what they do in uh, bio biology labs commercially everywhere. So I modified the bio, uh, the, bio, the logical count method to the soil and the hemocytometer uh, context. So, so I'm, I'm doing things in a way that allow us to have more accuracy, but also in a way that's very open so that when there are established, hey, diamonds here, where there's established um, error rates, like we're open about that. Because huh, like with the soil mineral testing, that, that's only accurate for five, five things, five minerals. And then after that, it's very generalized and doesn't, because it's testing only one form of that mineral, you could be very tricked out by all the other forms that, that are there that the biology can release or when the water, it's waterlogged, the redox changes and then are released, um, all of that. So. And then I'm also teaching this, this is the other thing. The, the full course not only teaches you the microscopy, it, it teaches you a bunch of the other soil testing methods. So I'm gonna be doing redox, I'm doing pH. Um, it's really kind of like a full circle moment for my regenerative soil students because it circles back to how all these things uh, combine. Um, well, what other tools uh, would you need other than a microscope? If you click on the link in the description, just tab it out um, and scroll down to the bottom of the campaign description page, there's this really um, fun cartoon, little diagram that I created uh, that shows you the equipment that you'll need. And I, I, it's, it's part of the regenerative soil microscopy kit and that's part of the Explorer package in the Kickstarter. 
So you can go there right now and you can get everything that you need. I'm going, it's a stretch goal that I'm gonna be able to sell the, the Epifluorescence adaptations. So that's one of the things that is gonna be an add-on later on optional for people. Um, I haven't gotten that, that, that mapped out yet uh, on, on like the overall cost or anything like that. Uh, Cause he hasn't told me the bulk pricing. Um, but, but the idea is to get everyone in. The idea is to make this possible so that everyone is able to adapt and see fungi as the glowing super highways of the soil that they are. So, um, hopefully that answered your question. If it didn't, ask again. <laughs> and I saw some other questions in there. Please repeat them. Sorry, I get one at a time. So, uh, and then I start riffing on that. And if I try to answer another question that comes up, it'll screw up my train of thought. Um, Cause I'm all in with every question. I got a one track mind. So yeah, ask me any other questions that you have and I will answer, I'll repeat them and then I will answer them. Uh, so, Yeah, the other equipment. So I can tell you what the other equipment is. You'll need slides, cover slips, pipettes. You'll need um, cleaner fluid for this for the optics. You'll need um, uh, uh, the the Kim wipes. Um, you'll need these. This is included in the kit. Um, slides are included in the kit. Um, the I probably actually could throw in, um, I totally could uh, create a reference. Well, they would have to be color exact. Um, maybe we can buy these in bulk. Yeah, I think I'm gonna buy these in bulk. Um, so uh, pH, um, having a pH tester so that you can, and these are the ones you can dip. So you can dip them in, in the actual uh, tubes that you're testing things out in. Test tubes are included, um, and then stains, stains are included as well. Say never to turn your back in the audience. But listen, I want to make sure that everyone has like blue methylene stain. I want to make sure that everyone has the new stain um, that is the live dead stain for epifluorescence. I want to make sure that. Oh, you meant stuff like the min ion bricks meter. If you want to get a min ion, dive in with us. Feel free. Uh, that is a big, a big jump, though. I'm just warning you now. Um, that's a that it, you know. It's like one thing is the unit, and then it's all the supplies, is another thing, and then the replacement supplies, and then the pipettes, and then the micro centrifuge. Um, and then the, the microcentrifuge that allows you to hold enough on it. Um, awesome, awesome. So you get it, you get it. Okay, so it's a full laboratory thing. If you go DNA, you have to get a full DNA lab set up. And you have to get um, things that, um, yeah, you just have to, like, prep kits you have to you, there's a whole world to that um and there's actually certain things that are just like i'm working out here there's certain things i'm working out over there as i write regenerative soil dna because as i write this book i keep finding research for that book and feeding it over there and like thinking about that book as i write this book because it's a trilogy and they all work together so um, I would say if you want to join me on the journey and go regenerative soil DNA, yes, the Minion would be, would be on that journey for you with me. That's incredible. That's amazing. Yeah. So that's so, that's so cool. And I'm, I'm really excited. William P. D. Brown brought me on that, uh, onto that train. And so I'm so excited for you to have one too. And the bricks meter, yeah, I would totally get a bricks meter. I think we're gonna we're gonna be bricksing a lot of different things. People are gonna be bricksing um, compost. People are gonna be bricksing um, compost teas. I know people bricksing like the most random things. People are bricksing their egg yolks. I'm mean, not their egg yolks. They're their egg whites. Um, there's like 
there's there's so much that goes in, in into that that um but the bionutrient meter is another one when they become available again i think they have a supply chain issue we may have gotten like the last one before they they close that can a human consume bokashi well let's analyze that statement z if you take the pro em which is fit for human consumption and then you take food that is not spoiled that's readily edible like let's say the ingredients for sauerkraut or kimchi and you use the em and you ferment it why wouldn't it be edible right these are all edible and the food was edible and you just fermented it with this there's no byproduct that this would create um, this actually protects decomposition and these are the microbes that we use in fermentation processes that of, of those types so then that would be like a form of bokashi bokashi often has raw bran in it and i would not be eating raw bran um because i'm just not like a, a ruminant um and so i wouldn't i wouldn't be eating the raw bokashi um bran um, but the idea of what Bokashi is, fermented organic matter using these microbes is perfectly sound and is a wonderful question. Awesome. Any other questions? If not, I, I will go, I will, uh, I, I, I might, I might um, close it. I don't know. <laughs> We've been together an hour and 20 minutes. I appreciate you all so much. If you haven't checked out the Kickstarter, the link is in the description. It is, there's, I mean, it's, it's something that I've always done. And it's my seventh Kickstarter. It's my seventh Kickstarter and it's my, and it's a successful one again. So I've had two of them fail. So this is my fifth successful one. And it is on track to be my most successful one. And that I, w I would love for you to check it out. It's a book and a course like I've always done, but then it's this database, which is the most exciting thing I perhaps have ever come up with. It's, it's the greatest idea that I've ever had because it's a community catalyst that will serve and, and iterate out into the future and reveal truth and best practices and honor people I don't even know yet. And, and reveal techniques and insights that we don't even know yet at the same time as all of that. And when we get better food, it, it makes me want to come up with more things like this. I'm so excited about that. I want to see this one through though. I think that if we do this really, really well, I'm going to see people do, like Dave Asprey do this with biohacking. I'm going to see people do this with mycology, with William Padilla Brown's probably going to do it. Um, he may actually connect his database to ours so that we have that mycological connection and we have, because I mean, ectomycorrhizae are, are mushrooms, right? Endomycorrhizae, you know, right? Not, and vascular mycorrhizae, uh, you know, so we, we're, we're going to see this community source solutions platform roll forward and it's going to intentionally supercharge the regenerative change and a new, new levels of understanding and common sense and best practice and common practice will adapt and change. I'm so excited about it. Click the link below. The Kickstarter only has eight days left, so please share it with everyone you can. I need help sharing. I just one person sharing it. So everyone who shares it, you are helping me so much. And because it's so niche, everyone, we need everyone that, that wants to be involved to hear about it. So every time you share it, you're, we're getting close to that person that can help everyone. So thank you so much. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. And check out this Kickstarter. Share this video. Share the, the Kickstarter. Thank you so much. Have a great one.